So long as they go without a calculator and on the back, a lot of waves. Little vocabulary. You have a dividend that's being divided by a divisor, and the answer is called the quotient. And it usually has a might have a remainder. that you write as a fraction, put it back over the divisor. That's how we convert basically an improper fraction into a mixed number when you have numbers. If you have an improper fraction, the numerator is the dividend, the denominator is the divisor, and the divisor, you want to see how many times does it go into the dividend evenly. And you get a quotient, how many times it does go in evenly. And then you have a remainder over the divisor. When you have an improper fraction. So something like simple, like 5 over 2, two goes into 5 two times evenly with a remainder of 1 over the original divisor of 2. We don't put a plus when you're dealing with numbers. So we would write it as 2 and 1 half. Now, two plus a half is two and a half. We're going to have to have the plus when we do the polynomials. That's where we're going to have to have that plus. Okay? But that's how you convert mixed numbers. Sorry, improper fractions into mixed numbers. For a long division, we're going to want to take this dividend. And we're going to divide by the divisor. And when we convert it into long division, it's going to be the divisor on the outside. And we want to know how many times it can go into the dividend that goes underneath. And the answer is going to be a quotient up here. And then you're going to have plus a remainder, if there is one back over the original device if you have remaining. If you're going to do long division, you got to know how to convert it back into the good old division. Okay? Five hundred sixty-four divided by five. So we're dividing by five. Five is the divisor. We want to know how many times can five go into 564. Now, we used to teach a class called arithmetic, college arithmetic, math 250. Sometimes I have two classes of math and it was packed. 30 each. Because that's where some students coming back to school felt like they needed to start. They've been away from school for so long, they needed and felt more comfortable if they could go back and review the basic. And probably I had the most success with those students because I was able to build their confidence up. Especially stuff like this. The biggest thing I noticed with long division or any kind of application of math is their place value and their handwriting. 
when handwriting is a mess, they can't make heads or tails of what they have, what they're supposed to do with it. When they're doing long division, if things don't line up in the proper place, they're going to be trying to subtract hundreds from the tens place. Can't do that. Okay? Case in point, if you just pause with me for a second, something I'm going to share with you that'll drive my point home. Here, I'll give them that. So before I show it, I want to show you what place value is. How do you do it, Fred? So five in the hundreds place. Five goes into five how many times? Once. So in the hundreds place, that's where the one goes. Five goes into this side at one time. So I get in the hundreds place, five hundred. Because that's right over this five in the hundreds. Ones, tens, hundreds. What's the next step with long division? We subtract. So 4 minus 0 is 4. 6 minus 0 is 6. 5 minus 5 is 0. I have 64 left over. So then we go over to the tens place. Now we're right above the tens place. How many times can 5 go into 6? Well, not, not this. Just the 6. One place value at a time. Once, because that's how we're going to have to do it with polynomial. So the six in the tens place, it goes in one time. So we get five. In the tens place, it's a 50. 
and that's a 10 and that, and that place value. So we subtract. Six minus five, or four minus zero is four. Six minus five is one. So now we're in the ones place. And we look at this from the ones place, five goes into 14, how many times even? Two. And there we get the 10. And then we subtract. And we have a remainder of four. So it's plus four fifths because we have things lining up. When we take the divisor, 55 on the outside, and we want to divide it into 564, Fifty-five does not go into a, this single five, so there's nothing above the five. There's nothing in the hundreds place. So we slide over to the tens place. So now we're looking at it from the tens perspective. How many times can fifty-five go to fifty-six? Once. So in the tens place, that's a one. One times fifty-five from the tens place would be fifty-five. Because it's a 10, 10 times 55 would be 550. And then we subtract. And when we subtract, 4 minus 0 is 4, 6 minus 5 is 1, 5 minus 5 is 0. We have 14 left over. So now we're in the ones place. How many times can 55 go into 14? It doesn't. But here's the problem. If it doesn't, do I just leave a blank or what do I do? If you don't put this in the right place, you know you're in the tens place. In the ones place, it doesn't go in at all. So you need to go, it goes zero times in the, the, the ones place. So the most it can go in is 10 times even with the 550. It's got to be a 10. It doesn't go in the 14th at all. So we're in the ones place and it doesn't go. This is the remainder. Plus that 14 over the 55. But if I don't put the zero, I don't have a 10. And if I write one and 14 55ths, so you're telling me that 55 goes into 564 just once? Well, I'd like to do some money exchanging which is what you'll see in a second, if you don't understand the place value. Place value. So 502 divided into 51,709. So in the 10,000 place, 502 is going to five. So there's nothing above the five, nothing in the 10 thousand. 51, 502 that's going to 51, so there's nothing in the thousand place. So we start in the hundreds place. How many times can 502 go into 517? Once. And we get 502. Because this is in the hundreds place, this is actually 50,200. 100 times. 502 is 50,200. And we get 9 minus 0 is 9. 0 minus 0 is 0. 7 minus 2 is 5. We have 509. So we're done in the hundred place because 502 does not go into just the 5. So then we go over to the tens place and we're looking at just 50. Can 502 go into 50? No. So in the tens place, we have a zero. It doesn't go into 50 at all from the tens place. So if you don't put that zero, they don't have the right amount. It's like a placeholder. The next digit over, it's not a line up the hundreds. That was the first number that we used. The next digit would be in the tens. 
So we're looking at just 50, not the 509, just the 50. 502 does not go into 50. Zero times. So now we're in the ones place. So the ones place, we're now looking at 509. How many times can 502 go into 509? Once. One times 502 is 502. And then we subtract. 509 minus 502 is equal to a 7. So this is 101 plus 7 over 502. Place value. And you just are asking yourself one place value at a time. How many times does it go into this one? You break the problem up into smaller problems, but you got to ask the, ask the question each time. You got to hear that question. You got to hear yourself asking that question. Because I can't go around the room asking that question, you know, during a test for everybody. So, if you don't know your place value, you're going to get ripped off. On the video, but I have to pause the video now because this will copy that stuff. Okay, for those of you watching at home or replaying this or whatever, I'm just a better room 51,709. I made a mistake on the subtraction. I ignored that one. 502. There is nothing in the 10,000s. There is nothing in the thousands. We started here in the hundreds and we said it went in one time. 502. And we subtract and that's 50,200. And Zero, five, and there's a one. Okay. So now we are in the hundreds, and the hundreds are at 15 from the hundreds perspective. 502 does not go into 15. So now we slide over to the tens place. In the tens place, it ends at zero. So in the 10th place, we're looking at just the 150. 502 does not go into 150. So we still have a zero here. We have nothing in the 10th place. Then we slide over to the 1th place. So now we're looking at 502 into 1,509. Now, 500 and a 15. Five times, five times three is 15. But five times three, will that go into 1,500? Is it less than this? Because if it was bigger, I can't use three, I'd have to go with two. 502 times three, I get a six, I get a zero, I get a 15, it's 1,506, so that's less than. So it goes in at least three times. That would be a three. It goes three times evenly, I get 1,506. And then when we subtract, this time the remainder is three. Back to zero, that's a zero, that's plus three over five hundred two. two. Thank you for catching up. We're calling them zoned out on the one. So now we're doing long division with positive. This is still the dividend. Why do I need to have it in parentheses?
No, it's still the vision. But if I take off the parentheses, it'll change the order, it changes the whole question because this is now just 3x to the third plus 5x minus 7 over x and then a plus 2. The only thing being divided is the 7 and the x. The 4, this is 3x to the third. Sorry, it's supposed to be a squared. Be a squared. 3x squared plus 5x minus 7. That whole thing is divided by x plus 2. But it's not in parentheses. It's, it's a completely different question. It's this whole thing divided by that whole thing. It's this over this. Without the parentheses, it's only that one over the x. If it's this, then it's just this over the x plus 2. If it's this, then it's just this over x, and then you add 2. You may think it doesn't matter, but it does. And that's what is messing when I see it on tests. These details matter. I just want to test questions. Simplify first. Well, first of all, a lot of people just didn't bother to simplify. Six plus two times. Poke out the i. Square root of nine is three, so it's three times two i. For some reason, I saw plus three i. So I saw eight plus three i. I saw 8 plus square root negative 9. I saw 8, and then this just became positive 3. So it's like the rules that you had to follow just kind of disappeared. This is times 3i. And then you got to square it. So this is 6 plus 6i. Everything is now simplified, and now you get to square it. So whether you know the special product for this, or you multiply it out, which is what we've been doing, you know, practically all semester long, and I said I would do the special product, 36 plus 6i Plus 6i. Sorry, I'm just saying that wrong. I did it wrong. Six times 6i six is 36i. 6i six times 6 is another 36i. And then 6i times 6i is 36i squared. So there's 36. 36i plus 36i is 72i. And this is 36 times negative 1. So that's minus 36, and those two make it zero, so you're just left with 72 times i. But you have to simplify that first. Maybe you a nice perfect square. Just like this is number three, on number four, I give you a nice perfect square on the imaginary part, the real part you had to have, you left, you're left with radicals. You need to sit in an empty seat up here, no way to the back. No, it matters. That's why they both have to be in parentheses.
Just like when you're writing something. <laughs> there are, and we're going to describe how many or something, versus they are, which is there. Which one do you use? When do you use it? And let's go over there. The English language is messed up. More messed up than that. Okay. Right. So, the divisor, X plus two. Divided into three X squared. Plus 5x, and then a minus 7. Now, you notice I don't need the parentheses once I write it in this division process. Because now I'm dividing, and I'm dividing by this into this. This whole thing is divided by this whole thing on this. Okay. If you don't convert this into that, we have a problem. You got to be able to convert first. Rewrite. Here's how you go. All you care about, all you look at, the only thing that matters is the first term and that first term. That's all you look at. Just like when you were looking at the divisor with numbers and the very first place value in the dividend. How many times does it go into that place value? If it doesn't, you go on to the next place now. This time, you have a variable and then the constant. The only thing you care about, though, is the x. So we'll worry about the two later. The only thing you look at is, I want to make this x into a 3x squared. So what times x is going to give me 3x to the second? What do I multiply by? I need another 3x. I'm going to have to multiply by 3x times that x. To make a 3x squared. That's what I have to multiply by. So the first thing I'm going to multiply by is 3x to the first, x to the first. So it's going to be right here above the x to the first column. It lines up in place though. It's a 3x right here. That's the first term in my quotient. First term in the quotient. So now we pick what we're going to start with. The next thing you do is you actually multiply. It's that first term of the quotient times the entire divisor times x plus 2. So how do you make your choice? All you care about is the first term and this first term. This one and this one. That's how you make the choice. Once you make the choice, you've got to multiply. So it's distribution. 3x to the second. And then 3x times 2 is 6x. So when I multiply, I'm going to get 3x to the second. And then plus 6x. And everything should line up. X squared should line up under X squared. X to the first should line up under X to the first. Hundreds should line up under hundreds, tens under tens, you know, ones under ones. What's the next step in long division? Subtraction. All right. Here's what you would have to do. You would be subtracting, but you would be subtracting the whole thing. You know how hard it is to get these parentheses in the middle. Okay, you know I've gone over this field before. So, if I subtract and I put a parenthesis, what happens to the negative with the parenthesis? 
the distributes. So we're going to go ahead and do the distribution. You're going to subtract each one. So you just distribute the negative and subtract each term. You're going to see what's happening. You're going to see what happens on the side. So here's what you better have hope have happened. Hope have happened. You better hope what happened. These two better cancel out. 3x squared minus 3x squared, zero. That's why we chose this 3x with this x in the first place, is so this cancels out and get zero. Okay? 5x minus 6x. What do we get? What? Negative x. Just negative x. Negative 1x, yes, but it's just negative x. And now you bring down the minus 7. Then we go again. So now we look at this first term, x, and that first term, negative x, and we're in the constants column. And you ask yourself this question, what times this x is going to give me a negative x? <clears throat> negative. negative 1. Negative 1 times x is negative x. Negative 1 times this x is going to give me the negative x that I want. Okay? Now, the goal is to not have to do this every time. And you just look over here and so, right, look, something times x is negative x. So it's got to be a negative. And that's multiply by a negative. And then what times x is x? Well, that's just be a 1. 1 times x is x. Negative 1 times x. Negative 1 times that, x plus 2. So we distribute. This is how we made our choice. What times this x here in the divisor is going to give me this negative x in the dividend. So to make a positive into a negative, it's going to have to be negative. And then x, and an x, well, 1 times the x will give me the x. Negative 1 times x is negative. Distribute, we get negative x. Negative 1 times 2 is negative 2. So we get negative x minus 2. And now we subtract. Watch what happens when we subtract here. You subtract each one. Negative x minus a negative. When you subtract a negative, it becomes addition. Two consecutive negatives is now addition. Remember the whole process. This is supposed to cancel out. Give us a zero. Negative x plus x, zero. Cancels out. Negative 7 minus negative 2 becomes plus 2. Negative 7 plus 2 is negative 5. X does not go into negative 5. Because anything you multiply times an X is going to have an X in it, and you can't take an X away from a constant. So that's the remainder. So we write the quotient plus the remainder over the divisor. So plus, 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 always plus. That way you don't mess up the sign. Just always use a plus. The remainder is a negative 5 over the divisor of x plus 2. So this is 3x minus 1 plus negative 5 over x plus 2. Without that plus, it's a multiplication problem. So you have to put the plus. And that's long division.
and it's going to have a little more teeth on it. Six x to the third minus nineteen x squared plus sixteen x minus four divided by x minus two. Okay. So we'll rewrite it long division. The divisor's out here. The dividend is in me. And all you care about, the only thing that matters is this first x and the six x to the third. What times x gives you six x to the third? Six x to the third. Six x to the second times x will make a 6x to the third. So the first term that we're going to multiply by is a 6x squared. x squared should go right above the x squared column. So we have 6x squared. So here's also something that's going to be important. You're starting with x squared, so you only have two place values or two terms left to go. Kind of gives you an idea of how many left. I'll have an X baby and a constant. Now, when you multiply, you got to distribute. It's that 6X squared times the whole X minus 2. Six x squared times x is six x to the third. Six x squared times negative two is negative 12x. So we get 6x to the third minus 12x squared. X squared. And then we subtract. When you subtract, you're going to distribute the negative to each term. 6x to the third minus 6x to the third should cancel out. And when you subtract the negative, that becomes a positive. Two consecutive negatives make a positive. So this is negative 19x squared and then plus 12x squared. What do we get? Negative. And then negative seven x squared, and then bring everybody else plus sixteen x, and then remind the score. And then we go again. This x and this negative seven x squared. So what times that x? is going to give us a negative 7x to the second. So I need a negative 7. I only have a 1, so I have to multiply by a negative 7. I want an x squared. I just have an x, so I would need to multiply by an x. So negative 7x times the x, leaving negative 7 squared. So in the x to the first column, would be the minus 7x. And now you have to distribute times the entire divisor, times that x minus 2. And you want to get negative 7x squared, like you're supposed to. A negative times a negative, that's going to be a positive. Negative 7x times negative 2. 
positive 14 X to the first. So negative seven X squared plus 14 X. Signs are really gonna matter. Distribution's gonna matter. We subtract. Negative seven x squared minus a negative, that becomes a positive. Negative seven x squared plus seven x squared better cancel out, and that's a zero, cancel out. This is 16x minus just 14x. So this is going to be just 2x minus 4. And again, look at the good news. We started with x squared. The next column was x to the first. The last column is the constant. So this will be the last thing we can do. Anything afterwards would be a remainder if we have one. So we now look at 2x, and this is 1x. So what times 2x, sorry, what times 1x, so how that was, what times 1x is going to give me a 2x? Two. A 2. So the next one is going to be a plus 2. I want to make a positive 2x, so I can multiply by a positive 2. So don't forget to distribute. Two times the entire divisor. X minus two gives me two X minus four. And then we subtract. Subtract each one. That better make a zero, it does. Negative four minus negative four becomes negative four plus four. What's the remainder? Zero. So what in the world does that mean? What's the picture? So if I write it like a division, good old division problem from when we were kids. You know, we'll do little division symbols. It would look like this. Parentheses, 6x cubed minus 19x squared plus 16x minus 4 parentheses divided by parentheses x minus 2 parentheses equals the answer. But as a fraction, which is what we need to be used to, the dividend over the divisor is equal to the quotient. But you know what that means to us from the last chapter is this 6x to the third minus 19x squared plus 16x minus 4. If I multiply those sides by x minus 2 and undo the fraction, then this x minus two times is the factorization. This factor is that. I changed the other side, the six x cubed minus nine x squared. I changed it. I factored it because I just multiply those two polynomials together. I get the answer. Which means if this thing was equal to zero, then I could go x minus two equals zero and six x squared minus seven x plus two equals zero. I saw the first one add two, I saw the second one by factoring or quadratic formula or any other method I want. 
Because in the real world, you've got to solve this equal to zero. So you try factoring first, find a common factor. And there's ways to find factors by using things like Descartes' rule. Possible rational roots. So I'm going to do language. This is an illustration of the division algorithm. If f of x and d of x are polynomials such that d of x cannot be zero, and the degree of d of x is less than or equal to the degree of f of x, then there exists unique polynomials q of x and r of x such that. That is why. You go and pass this class, you better start treating it as such. If you're going to do something with this class in STEM class, you better treat it as such. F of X, that's just some function and this function. So we've got a couple of functions here. They're polynomials. What's a polynomial? Things that have powers of X, adding and subtracting a bunch of powers of X. X to the fifth minus 5X to the fourth plus 3X squared plus 2. Polynomial. D of X can't be zero because you know what you're going to be? D of X, denominator of X, divisor with respect to X. The degree of X has to be smaller than F of X because we're not going to take X to the fifth and divide by X to the seventh. It has to go in evenly. So the degree of the numerator of the dividend has to be bigger than the degree of the divisor. X to the seventh over an X to the sixth. At best, it could be an x to the seventh divided by x to the seventh. But it can't be a bigger divisor. There is a unique polynomial quotient plus remainder. So you have f of x divided by the divisor, d of x, and that would equal a quotient plus a remainder. The remainder is always written over the divisor. And how they got this, dividend equals divisor times quotient plus just the remainder. They multiply both sides by D of X. So this is now just F of X equals Q of X times the divisor with respect to X plus that reduces just plus the remainder. And if the remainder is zero, okay, the divisor goes evenly into the function. It's a factor. All of that is just language. And at some point, again, you can't fight the language. Not saying you have to embrace it. But you've got to deal with it. you got to make sure you follow these steps. Before you apply the division algorithm, you got to make sure the dividend and the divisor are written correctly. They have to be in descending powers of the variable. Remember what I said about solving quadratic formulas? First of all, it better be quadratic, but it needs to be a positive. How many times did I say, please keep your X squared positive? Boy, that went up one year, not the other. Um, but it needs to be X squared, X to the first constant. You want to have X squared first and then all the way down to your constant term. Put it in the right order. Descending degree of the variable. Same for the dividend and the divisor. Insert placeholders with zero coefficients for missing powers of the variable. Placeholder. And we've dealt with placeholders before. When you deal with 
dividing and getting decimals. So the first one eight x to the third minus one is being divided by two x minus one. Is everything in the right order? Are all the powers written from biggest to smallest? Yeah. That's an x to the third, and that's an x, that's x to the zero. We just don't, we're missing something. We're just missing something. So it's written in the right order, both of them, but we're missing. We need placeholders. It's not going to work unless you have placeholders, and here's why. It would be... 8x to the third minus 1, and you're dividing by 2x minus 1. And here's what would happen if you don't have the placement. First of all, what times 2? What, what times 2 is 8? A 4. So we put a, we just put a 4. And what times x is x to the third? We put an x squared. Now, normally, we like to have our 4x squared to line up with the column of x squared. I don't have any x squared. So, so you multiply 4x squared times 2x. That's my 8x squared. 8x to the third time. 4x squared times negative 1 is negative 4x squared. And then you do the subtraction. That's a 0. And that becomes addition. And then what in the heck am I adding 4x squared from? Or 2. Sometimes it's going to be subtraction. That's why we need a placeholder. There's nothing to add or subtract the 4x squared from because there's nothing above the x squared place. So the first thing you should do, if you're missing powers, is to put them in and you use zero as your coefficient. This is 8x to the third. We're missing x squared plus 0x squared, we're missing x to the first, plus 0x, and then this would be minus 1, divided by 2x minus 1. So all the powers are there. All the powers are there. So now, we have 2x minus 1, is the divisor going into 8x to the third plus 0x to the second plus 0x minus 1. And the first thing we chose to start with was 4x squared. So 4x squared is going to go right here. We distribute. Now, hopefully, we're here now. 4x squared times the 2x, 8x to the third. 4x squared times negative 1 is negative 4x squared, right under the x squared. And then we subtract. That better be 0. It is 0x zero squared minus a negative even plus. 0x squared plus 4x squared is 4x squared plus 0x minus 1. And now you're looking at 2x and 4x squared. What times 2x is 4x squared? What, what times 2 is 4? 2. What times x is x squared? An x. So the next number will be the 2x, and x will line up with this x. 2x times 2x, 4x squared. 2x times negative 1 is negative 2x. Okay. Zero, that becomes addition. Zero x plus two x is two x minus one. And then what times two x is two x? Plus one. One times two x is two x. One times negative one is negative one. And then we subtract again. And we get 2x minus 2x, 0. Negative 1 minus negative 1 becomes plus. The remainder is 0. So the answer is just 4x squared plus 2x plus 1. 
But without the placeholders, we're not going to have things line up where they should. With the placeholders, you know you're starting with x squared. You only have two places left to go. It needs to be in the right order. What's the biggest power in the dividend? X to the fourth. So you want to rearrange it. This is 2x to the fourth. What's the next biggest power? 4x to the third. And then five, negative 5x squared. Make sure you have all the right signs. And then a 3x. And that's a minus 2. It is being divided by x squared plus 2x minus 3. So the dividend is x squared plus 2x minus 3 into 2x to the fourth plus 4x to the third minus 5x to the second plus 3x minus 2. Now, this can be intimidating. First of all, you have to change everything around, rewrite it, get your signs right. Oh my gosh, there's a whole bunch of them. That's one thing at a time. X squared. One X squared, I want two. So I have to multiply by at least a two. X squared, I want X to the fourth. So I'm going to multiply this by one. I need a two and a one. A two X squared. To make this X squared into a two X to the fourth, I'm going to have to multiply by 2x squared. So it needs to be here above the x squared. I'm starting at the x squared, which means I only have two place values left to go. I'm not going to go to the right. I'm not going to go to the x to the thirds. I'm going to go to the left, x to the first, and a constant. There's should be. It's that 2x to the second times each one. If you have to write it on the side, do it. That 2x squared times this x squared is 2x minus 3. We get 2x to the fourth. We get 4x to the third. And we get minus 6x to the second. And then we subtract. Look at this. 4x to the third minus 4x to the third. That can't be. Negative 5x squared minus negative 6x. That's plus. So negative 5x squared plus 6x squared. What do we get? Just x squared. So x squared plus 3x. Minus two. So here's where it gets to be a little challenging. I did this on purpose. The next column would be x to the first. If I multiply x squared times an x, x times an x squared, I get an x to the third. Do I have an x to the third? They cancel out. They made a zero. I don't have anything in the x to the third column. So how many x squared do I need? I need zero x to the first. There's nothing there. It's like when we had that zero in our long division with the numbers. Okay. I just want to make this x squared become an x squared. What times x squared is x squared? One. One. So the one would be in the constant column, plus one. That's all I can do, because I just want to make this first term equal to that first term. What times x squared is x squared? One. So one times x squared is x squared. One times positive 2x is positive 2x. One times negative 3 is negative 2. And then we subtract.
that cancels, that's a zero. 3x minus 2x is just x. Negative 2 plus 3 is equal to positive 1. So the remainder, we get plus x plus 1 over the original divisor, x squared plus 2x minus 3. Don't leave it like this because that's not simplified. 2x to the fourth plus 4x to the third minus 5x squared plus 3x minus 2. And you know what? You don't have to write the whole thing out. It'll be printed at the bottom of the box. You're just going to write your answer thing up. 2x squared plus 0x. That's just 0. 2x squared plus 1 plus x plus 1 over x squared plus 2x minus 3. The quotient plus the remainder over the divisor. Now, with respect to the homework, thirteen to nineteen odd, thirteen to nineteen, you're doing long division. Twenty-nine, twenty-three, twenty-nine. We're doing synthetic, so that would have to be from Monday. So you should be able to do thirteen to nineteen, get that done, and then twenty-three to twenty-nine, and the we'll start of chapter four. We're gonna, we will be going through chapter four quickly, not because I'm gonna go quick, just because they are quick. Like get thirteen to nineteen done on three point three. Professor, can I actually get an assignment sheet as well, please? Yes, sir. Thank you. 